Hey, hey, what's up? Good evening. This is your boy PK, Professor Ken, aka Pippin Ken. And today's lesson is law number 13. Pimp like you holist. That's right. You got to always pimp like you holist. Let me give you a synopsis. Many years ago, when I was a very young man, there was a dude in my community who was very popular. He went by the name of Mr. Rob Robertson. This dude was official P.I. You know, they called him back in the day a white host pimp. And the man pimped so good that he took his pimping out to the East Coast and he was able to get a big name out there. He was mashing for his rash and the dude was really stunk down with it. And uh, while he was out there, you know, he accumulated a few dames, maybe seven or eight dangers and you know he bought Rolls Royces and everything. Eventually he fell off and he ended up with one dame and it was a redhead dame that he used to call his bottom chick but I guess the chick got tired of the game and bounced on him like you know basketball or something and he ended up being holeless and doless and then Rob told me he said listen man he sent me down one time he said man you know, this when I was in my beginning of my career. He said, listen, man, you got to always pimp like you hold this, man. He said, you got to be in high pursuit of a new prostitute. He said, man, you got to do this shit for bread and meat. If you don't do it, you don't eat. And I understood what he was saying because, you know, I kind of felt him because by the time he had gave me this conversation, I had already had been through a few situations, you know, in and out my dough, you know what I mean? One day, chicken, next day, feathers. You know, we eat the chickens, but we couldn't eat the feathers. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, one gone, you know, Chinese name, one gone. You know, talking about they ain't got on like they've been shit on, you know what I mean? You can't do nothing but accept it. You know, phone call here, phone call there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Greyhound bus here, Greyhound bus there, you know, uh, baby sick here, baby sick there, you know what I'm saying? You know, lie here, lie there, you know, actress uh, in effect, you know, this professional actress. Lying, you know, just to get away from this game. And, you know, you can't do nothing but accept it. Because, you know, like they say, when they got to go, they got to go. You know, when you got to go take a piss, man, you got to take a piss, man. You got to get that, you got to lick that antifreeze. You know what I'm saying? And when a bitch ready to get out, man, she ready to go out. You know, she ain't going to sit there and explain nothing to you, man. You just going to wake up one day and she going to be gone. Just like the wind. So... What Rob was saying, man, you got to pimp like you hold this and do this, man. He said, man, you can't just depend, you know, on the five that's down with you. Just because you got 50 toes don't mean, man, that you can't wake up with zero toes. You know what I'm saying? You got to always, you know, look, hey, man, how can I turn this 50 toes into 60 toes, these 60 toes into 100 toes? You know, 100 toes is 10 bitches. That's what he said. And I was like, yeah, I understand, man. You know, he was just really giving me the game, you know, teaching me how to do that. And the same thing in business. You know what I'm saying? If you own a corporation, man, you don't want to just depend on one manager, one executive. You need several executives. You don't need one account. You need two accounts. Suppose that account gets sick. Suppose he breaks his leg. Suppose he get hired by a better company and they pay him more money. So you got to always be in high pursuit of a new prostitute. You know, and you know, uh, as well as I know corporate America, you know, you look at all of us who work for you as prostitutes, you know. I mean, it's just the mentality. It's the mentality of Pippin. The corporate America is no different from people in the streets. Corporate America, you know, uh, Romney, motherfuckers like that who, you know, bang capital. You know what Obama was talking about? Man, the motherfuckers was, you know, they was doing their thing. You know, one minute, you know, they got a company that's thriving. The next minute, they selling motherfuckers out. They moving around, catching another a lick. And, you know, you know, you never know when you might, you know what I'm saying, be caught up in them webs, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand that, man. You know, that you got to, you know, construct your web just like a spider. You know, one thing I like about a spider, man, you know, the spider never lives in the web. The spider, what it does is it constructs the web. And then he puts the string of the web on his stomach. So when some, a weaker creature enters into that web, it sends a telegraphic message to the stomach of the spider. And then he go, he don't eat the thing or the insect, he just stick his needle in there and he suck all the juices out of it. You know, but he keep that well, man. He always trying to catch something. And that's how you got to be. You all got to always be trying to catch, man. You know, and I'm going to read a little bit from this book. Of course, you know, we on Law 13. We're reading from my book, Pimpology, the 48 Laws of Game. And I'm reading from page 52. It says, I always expect a hoe to leave. I always expected a hoe to leave. 
But when she left, she bumped into another hoe on the way out. You know what I'm saying? So she can leave all she want. Mother had a motherfucker. I'm going to keep on saying it. You know, I pimped like I was homeless, always in high pursuit of a new prostitute. And fuck what the hoes say or what the other hoes think. It's pimp say, not hoes say. You know, a bitch can say whatever she want to say about she going to be there forever and she ain't going to never leave. A, a person, you know, who are, who, are your, who are for your company, he can say, yeah, man, I ain't going to never leave your corporation. I'm going to always be here. I'm not believing that shit. Man, I had people that worked for me and I gave them jobs, man, took them off the streets and everything. You know, especially, you know, when I was, uh, you know, uh, 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 promoting uh, different aspects of entertainment and, and entertainment business, man, I would give dudes the opportunity, man. They was like, man, Ken, I'm down with you for life. Man, you my dude, man. You know, i F with you. And, man, next thing you know, man, them dudes gone, man, like the wind, man. You know what I mean? Only thing I remember was they funky smell they left. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, don't go for that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? You don't believe in that shit. And then it says, uh, we're going to go on, we're going to read, it says, uh, in the same way, you have to work each, you have to, you have to work, excuse me, these dark shades, I'm going to take, I'm going to look, I'm going to put these shades up. In the same way, you have to work each day, like you're never going to make another dollar. Don't just rely on one stream of income. Never put all your eggs in one basket. And always have a backup plan for your backup plans. Interesting. Never put all your eggs in one basket. Never depend on one stream of income. If you have a company in IBM, you also need to have a you know, investment in MySpace. Investment in Facebook. You need to have investment in corn. You need to have investment in a club or in real estate. You always got to spread your hustle out. Because you never know when one hustle might go bad. You know, and you always got to have a backup plan for your backup plan. So that means if you plan to do this, this, that, and the other, one, two, three, also have a four, five, six plan and a five, a, 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 a seven, eight, nine plan. You know, a backup plan for your backup plan. Don't never just stop at one thing. Always say, man, you know, suppose this happened. And if this happened, then I need to be prepared for that. You know, and that's the same thing when I was in the game, when I lived that life. I always pre prepared for a dame to get out on me. Because if she left me, you know, I knew that I had to, you know, call somebody else that I've been thinking about or been giving me some action say, hey, look here, you know, I need you to come on through. I got a spot for you. You know what I'm saying? I want to see what you're about. And I want to see if, you know, we can make some things happen between each other. And that's just, that's just the game. That's just how it go. That ain't nothing to do with me. That's just the way people think in this lifestyle. And you have to think similar. Otherwise, you're going to get gobbled up. Oh, let me uh, read a little more. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go on down to the, uh, to the bottom of the page. It says, when people sense that you are not worried, it makes them respect you more. When somebody knows that you ain't worried and people know you're not dependent on them, you got them just where you need them. If people think that you need them, they're going to take you through all kind of hell. You know, when you got six or seven days around, it's hard for them days to be like, wow, you know, I'm going to leave this dude and leave him broke. I'm going to fuck up his hustle. It's hard for them to do that when they know that you got six or seven other days on your line just sweating and ready, you know, ready to go ahead, you know what I'm saying, put that fee in effect, you know what I mean, and make sure it's official like a referee whistle. You know, so that's, you know, one of the things that you, you know, that's what it's talking about in that in that uh, particular statement. It says, whenever you are desperate, and this goes for everything, whenever you are desperate, this goes for everything, people will take advantage of you every time. Make sure you're not dependent on one particular job, person, or income for your security. That's what it means. That's what chapter... 13 is all about. That's what they're talking about, pimp like you hold us. You know, we're talking about the mentality of pimping. You got to always be ready to make your next move your best move. You got to always be in high pursuit of your next prostitute. And I'm talking about real estate. I'm talking about uh, any type of investment that you may deem appropriate. 
You just got to stay ready. You got to stay ready like spaghetti. You got to continuously always expect something to go wrong or expect things to come empty handed. Otherwise, you'll end up like my man Rob Robinson. The greatest, one of the greatest pimps to ever live. Broke, busted, and disgusted with no hope. Since then, Rob has redeemed himself. But when he told me this story, he was telling me, you know, to kind of warn me to not to fall into that same trap. And I'm giving you that same trap in Law 13. Pimp like you hold us. Act like you don't have nothing. Stay hungry, my friend. Peace.